at the stadium between the Bills and the Bengals. I mean, when I was in the press box, it was almost like you could hear a, a pin drop. And both teams were on the sidelines huddling around, and he was getting CPR. Hamlin was getting CPR for minutes, almost 10 minutes. And then once he got out on... Once, once he got out on the ambulance and, and was carted off the field, the Bills and the Bengals were together in circles, almost like praying on, on the field. Uh, and then they went back into the locker rooms where the game was temporarily suspended. When I was trying to go down there just to get something, all of the media got ushered onto the field uh, and, and the hallways were totally closed off in terms of letting people go by because both teams were in meetings with each other. And then Hamlin was carted off in the, in the ambulance and was kept in right outside the tunnel pretty much uh, with his mom, waiting for his mom to get to him before they carted him off here to UC Medical Center. And again, Jeff, like you said, in critical condition, uh, not too many updates outside of the NFL's update right now, but we're all awaiting to see the status of DeMar Hamlin, and we're all praying that he's okay. We certainly are, James. Thank you. James Cotato joining us outside University of Cincinnati Medical Center there tonight where DeMar Hamlin has been brought after collapsing on the field tonight. The NFL saying that he is listed in critical condition. We did receive an update from a gentleman named Jordan Rooney, who has been listed by many large accounts, a uh, marketing manager for DeMar Hamlin, um, saying that his vitals are back to normal and they have put him to sleep to put a breathing tube down his throat. They're currently running tests. Uh, no more clear information than that at this point, outside that he is listed in critical condition. Want to get to my colleague, Matt Beauvais, who now joins us uh, from Cincinnati tonight. Um, Matt, the eyes of the, the entire sports world on this game for a variety of reasons and for good reason, it shifted away from the contest at hand and on to thoughts and prayers for DeMar Hamlin and a dire situation that we saw unfold on the field there tonight in Cincinnati. Matt, you've covered a lot of football during your career. What were your thoughts there this evening as you witnessed this unfold? That that's a human. And it's so much more than football. And this team means so much to the community. And I think people in Western New York really view these people like brothers, like sisters, like friends. And when you see that happen to somebody who you cherish so much and that you look up to so much, I think it just puts everything into perspective. And it, it was awful. I mean, everything about it was awful. Like you said at the beginning, this last eight days was all about how this was the biggest game of the NFL season because it meant so much. And then within a matter of minutes, none of it mattered anymore because somebody who plays football for a living had that happen to them. I've never seen a team so distraught, and understandably so. I mean, I'm watching this from up in the press box, so I can tell you, I can echo what James just mentioned. Everybody's just kind of in a state of shock. You're trying to figure out what exactly is happening. You look out onto the field, and almost immediately they bring out the stretcher and they bring out a backboard, which is never a good sign. Usually right when that comes out, you know it's something that's very serious or they're looking into something that's very serious. Then a couple minutes later, the ambulance came out onto the field. And the ambulance was out on the field for a while. It was so critical. I mean, obviously, he's in critical condition right now. It looks like, from my perspective, that doctors were giving him CPR for several minutes and then eventually he was taken away on the ambulance, but the players, while this are going on, sobbing, other players needing to console each other because they couldn't believe what was happening. Players looked visibly sick because they had never experienced anything like this. I mean, there are injuries and there are what we saw today. And I have never seen anything like this happen, not just with the Bills, but with the NFL. Um, for, for the game to be postponed, it's the right decision. It's the only decision. There was no way that these players could have gone back out onto that field and played football after witnessing what they had just witnessed. Quite frankly, I'm surprised it took as long as it did for that decision to come down from the NFL. But they had no other choice. So I know there are a lot of questions about what this means for the football side of things. But I think, quite frankly, that's just not okay to talk about right now. I think right now it's just trying to make sure that Demar Hamlin is 
being taken care of in the best way possible and that, you know, the community is with him back in Buffalo and then obviously here in Cincinnati. I, I've already seen some pictures and some tweets. I know James is out at the hospital, that there are now fans who are showing up at the hospital. It's, it's an incredibly, incredibly difficult situation. And there's really not a playbook on any of this because things like this just have not happened. No. And they happen tonight. Yeah, you're absolutely right. And I echo that thought of your, it was mind numbing to me that it took so long for them to postpone, you know, this game here tonight, Matt. And there are injuries in this sport. It is a violent sport. Injuries happen often, but you could tell the shock and the dire situation just by the, the way that players looked tonight, right? The reaction, you touched on it a bit. Uh, Josh Allen, uh, you know, um, Stefan Diggs with, with tears running down his face. You knew right away that this really wasn't an injury that was going to be something that, you know, here's five minutes, let's warm back up and let's play ball again. This, this one immediately felt different, didn't it? I think it's sometimes people will roll their eyes when sports teams, when football teams, when in this case the Bills, they refer to each other as like family or as brothers. But it's important to understand that I really do believe that they feel this way about each other because basically from the beginning of August until whatever today is, January 2nd, these guys are spending every waking moment with each other from 8, 9 in the morning until 5 o'clock in the afternoon. This is their job. Think about how much time you spend with your coworkers or your people that you are close to and then take that and stretch it over this long, long, several month thing, and then add also travel into the mix. Like these guys are incredibly close. So I think for them, it would have been impossible to go out there. And, and it's also just, it's not fair to ask anybody to do that. So I don't know who ultimately made the decision. And like we said, it took longer than it should have, but it was the right decision because tonight should be about somebody's life and their health and not about a football game, not about what this means for the playoffs, not about any of that. Yeah. Eventually that will come back, but right now it's just about Jamar Hamlin and his family and those who know him and the situation that we watched unfold in Cincinnati. Yeah, and about life and about a human being. Football yeah, means exactly. nothing tonight at all. Hey, I wanted to cut away here real quick, Matt, and show a live shot. This is live video right now outside University of Cincinnati Medical Center where it appears that some Bengals fans, there's some Bills fans mixed in there as well, have started gathering to, you know, show their support for DeMar Hamlin, the Buffalo Bills, um, the Bills safety again, um, in the hospital there tonight in Cincinnati, listed in critical condition. That's the latest word from the NFL. Matt, can I touch base with you on one other thing? And I know that, you know, there's a lot going on. This is, this is <laughs> draining and emotional as a human being to watch this happen. What, what do we know about the team at this point? Like what happened? Is, 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 the team, is the team still going to travel? I mean, do, do we know logistics? Are they staying in Cincinnati? Like, what do we know? No. And, and none of it matters. I'm just curious what you saw from the, from the team trying to move forward from this decision being made that this, was, this game was suspended tonight. Well, let me paint this picture for you. So I am actually talking to you in the tunnel of the stadium. Uh, our original plan was for me to be on camera, but right now we are not being allowed onto the field because it is our understanding and is the security guards here understanding that there are several members of the Bills team that are still in the locker room. And just like in Buffalo, there is only one way out onto the field here. So just out of a respect for privacy and what they are currently dealing with, they have the tunnel blocked off so you can't get out onto the field. So I believe that there are still most of the members of the team here. Now, the thing that's very interesting about the logistics of this are on a normal game like this, the team would be flying back home to Buffalo. So they would not have hotel rooms to be in the city because they would be heading home. Now they are likely trying to figure out where are they going tonight? Are they going to the hospital? Do they have to go over to the hospital in waves because there are so many people? It's not just the 53 players on the roster. Mm -hmm. There are more than 100 people who are with this team, whether it's you know staff on the sideline, coaches, people who do stuff behind the scenes. So that, they now need to figure out what is happening on the – and once again, I, I want to make it clear, none of this matters right. in comparison, but they now need to figure out 
is this football game being played a different day? Is it going to be played later in the week? Is this football game going to basically just never happen again? And it's just going to be wiped. Are they going back to Buffalo? Are they staying in Cincinnati? Do they have to just kind of be in a holding pattern until they hear something from the league? So these are the things that they're trying to figure out. But right now, they're just kind of trapped. I don't think that they have the ability yet to get over to the hospital or get to a hotel because I don't believe they have hotel rooms for a hundred and something people that would be traveling with an NFL team just readily available on a Monday night. Right. And then as far as the hospital is concerned, right now, as James had reported and as uh, some of the affiliates in Cincinnati have reported, it sounds like Jamar had family here tonight. So right now this is about him and his family being with him. And then it's how does the team get there? Right. And there was the, right. Yeah. And, that, and I think it's a football completely back burner. The reason I brought that up is, I, you know, that some of these players right, want to be oh. near their friend and their colleague and, you know, their their teammate here uh, to show their support in any way that they can. And, and I guess that's the only reason that question came to mind, just knowing how tight this team is. It, 100%. And it's no different than if it was somebody who you deeply cared about in any walk of life. If it was somebody who you viewed like a brother, if it was somebody who you viewed like a sister, somebody who you were super close with, a work relationship, a friendship that was lifelong. I mean, DeMar Hamlin got drafted by this team two years ago. Right. He has been playing basically the entire season in place of Micah Hyde, who suffered a season and an injury against the Titans earlier in the season. He immediately came in ready to work. You know, we are around DeMar pretty often doing what we do, covering sports. There are 53 guys in that locker room. You get to know them. Now, obviously, I do not know him even close to those people that are on the team, but he's confident, but not overpowering, not cocky or anything like that. He's a pretty soft-spoken guy, just very, very career-oriented. It is very clear from knowing him or knowing him to the level that I do that he really wants to be the best football player that he can be, and he really took it upon himself to fill those big shoes from Micah Hyde. So there is nothing but respect for him as a football player and as a person in that locker room because he was thrust into a really big role, and he embraced it, and he put in all of the effort that he possibly could. And that's one of those reasons why, Oh, I, I, I had just mentioned to you that I, I, it seems like the team has cleared out because they have just opened up the hallway that they were okay. previously blocking off. So I would imagine at this point either the Bills have made their way over to the hospital or they are at a hotel somewhere sure. waiting to get clearance from the league about what's going to happen next.